This almost looks normal. But this also almost looks normal. Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome to an Usually Horrid vlog. If this is your first time here, welcome in. Thank you for clicking on this video and choosing to spend some time with me today. If you are returning, also thank you for choosing to spend some time with me today. And thanks for coming back. So today I want to talk about a little skincare journey that I've been on. I guess this video has been in the making for a few months, but I needed storage on my phone. And honestly, I went through a patch where I let my skincare go to crap and I didn't think this video really would be made. So I did delete a lot of my progress photos, bad on me, but I feel like my progress speaks for itself when it comes to the skincare. So I thought it would be kind of fun to talk about my skincare journey and do kind of a half and half makeup look today. So I'm gonna show you on one side of my face what it looked like when I was hiding my skin versus now that I'm healing my skin. Hiding versus healing. So let's start years ago, years ago before I get started. I'll get my hair up while I tell you this. Um, so I have always had like really horrible skin ever since puberty hit, I've had horrible cystic acne. I mean, I still have acne scars. That's so just gonna be part of my life. Unless I like genuinely go get like dermabrasion something. I don't know, I'm not an esthetician. I don't know these things. I forget these things in Cosmo. It looks like I'm wearing like a really obnoxious choker. I don't remember these things from Cosmo school. I focused on the hair. I know that I could pay lots of money and get this scarring here removed. But in the meantime, I have found things to improve it and make my skin look as glowing as it is now versus like a year ago <laughs> versus six months ago. Uh, whew, six months ago, my skin was rough, which is why I thought this video was never going to be made. But look at me getting on track with my life. I actually have one of the most functional routines I've ever had in my life and my skin reflects this. Okay, let's get started. So. Do, 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 do. This half, this is my right half. This shall be the half that I'm going to show my current makeup look on because a lot of the way I've changed my makeup routine also has to do with the sty that I've had on my eye for months and months. If you have watched a previous video of mine when my basically my return to YouTube video from a couple months ago. It even says health issues on the thumbnail. This is the health issue we were speaking of. And <laughs> the American healthcare system is super fabulous because it took four doctors, hundreds of dollars, and a lot of my time to be prescribed a steroid cream. But the good news is it's been working. So with that being said, this steroid cream is super greasy. It's not like I could put any makeup over it even if I wanted to. So I adapted and embraced my natural skin in the name of healing. And I think it's worked. Okay, so let's get started. Either way, regardless of what side I'm working on, my skincare routine prep, which I've already done today because it is 11.01. So I go to the gym and then I take a shower and then after I get out of the shower, my skincare routine starts daily. So before I tell you what I start with my skincare routine too, just real quick. Back in the day, back when I was getting ready for my wedding, I thought skincare was just using as many like fancy products that I could that Etsy would sell me or that I could find at Ulta. My skin did brighten and clear, but I also seriously wrecked my skin barrier. So I used to have extremely greasy, oily skin in puberty, and that followed me all the way through high school and most of my early 20s. I remember when I would do my makeup in beauty school in 2017, my makeup would just slide off my nose. No matter what primer I used, no matter what powder I used on top, it would just be gone by the end of the day. But by the time my wedding was over, I didn't have that problem anymore. In fact, my makeup wouldn't stay on because my skin was so dry and patchy because I had destroyed my skin barrier. So I kind of wanted to rethink skincare and TikTok is a great place for education, whether or not people want to believe that it is. And I started following a lot of estheticians and dermatologists and 
I really found out that like some of the cheapest skincare is truly the best. And to stop looking at fancy ingredients and start looking at ingredients that really truly matter. And honestly, my skin feels healthier than it's ever felt. So I'm happy with that. So with that being said, here's what my base prep is before I do any makeup every day. So every day I start off with my CeraVe Hydrating Facial Cleanser. The good things about this cleanser is that it's non-comedogenic, which means it's not gonna cause blackheads or any type of like acne because of it, which like most facial cleansers should be. But the main thing that drew me to this one, other than the hydrating just being right there, what does the hydrating come from? It comes from the hyaluronic acid, which I didn't know what that was until I started watching all these dermatologists and learned that this acid actually does help moisturize and hydrate. So I started using this. It's a super gentle facial cleanser. It doesn't even lather. Not everything needs to lather either, which is something I learned. Now, if I'm taking my makeup off before I use this, I'll just use regular micellar water and then I will cleanse with this afterward. Next, obviously I follow up with moisturizer, which again, which hyaluronic acid was a priority. So I bought, this is just the Target brand version of CeraVe's hydrating moisturizing cream. The CeraVe one was a little expensive. This had the exact same ingredients though, and it has that hyaluronic acid, which honestly, you actually do need to have moisture on your skin for that to work or it'll dry out your skin more. So you just gotta make sure that your face is nice and damp after you wash, and then you just lather that right up into your skin. I used to use bio oil, but you're not supposed to use that for more than three months. And anytime I try to mess with it for more than three months, I will instantly get dry patches here. So I have been using lately this 100% organic cold pressed rosehip oil by The Ordinary, which I've used their AHA and BHA mask several times. So I wanted to give this a chance. I hate the way this smells, but that's kind of a good thing because that means you know like it's actually organic because there's not a bunch of fragrance in it. And I feel like this brightens my skin very nicely. So that is my base before I do any makeup. So after my base is on, I honestly, I've played with tons of primers and my favorite just keeps going back to the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. I really do love this stuff. So my old routine was to just get this everywhere on my face. Everywhere. Obviously, because I was doing a full face of makeup at the time. So on my healing side, honestly, I just take that primer that is actually a ton on my finger and I get it in my eyebrow and just on my top eyelid. I'm not really taking it anywhere else. So my next step from here is kind of the same for each side. Originally on this side, my OG makeup routine, I would sort of take it on the top of my eyebrow, under my eyebrow, and all over my eyelid, like so. You've probably seen me do it tons of times throughout my makeup videos. And on my healing side, I just take it right under the eyebrow and sort of on the lid. I'm really not trying to have too much product on there because it's not going to a huge surface area. And then of course I just take my beauty blender and blend this out. Now on this side, I'm only blending it up into my eyebrow, trying not to blend over my eyebrow at all, and mostly focusing that concealer just on the top lid as an eyeshadow primer. I'm not trying to conceal anything, it's just more of an extra primer. And on this side, I normally would just blend it everywhere because it's all gonna get covered up anyway. I would often drag it up my forehead as well to try and cover some of the redness. Now, my next step is going to be the same for each side because it is my brows. I'm doing the exact same thing I've done to my brows in every other video, so I think we can just skip this. So bing, bang, boom, eyebrows on. Now to the eyeshadow. Now, not for any particular reason, as far as healing goes, do I choose to wear like a neutral colored eyeshadow. Doing one color of eyeshadow just really makes my morning routine really quick. And I like to use the neutral shadow because with a bare face, I just feel like it, it blends better. It meshes well. So what I've been using for eyeshadow on the healing side is um, from everything I'm gonna use for eyeshadow is gonna be from this Morphe palette. Honest to God, I love this palette so much. I really do. You can tell it's well loved. I've actually hit pan 
in the color that I'm about to use. What is its name? It's called Alfresco. So Alfresco is probably one of the first colors in my many Morphe palettes that I have hit pan on. So I just take my favorite fluffy brush here and dip it right in. And I actually just start at right under the brow bone and make my way all the way down. Now when I'm doing like an all over eyeshadow color like this, especially I feel like when I'm doing a neutral color like this, I like to just pat it on in small sections before I like brush back and forth. That way it doesn't wind up looking as patchy. So on the hiding side, I honestly, one of my favorite eyeshadow looks to do is a pink eyeshadow look. And there's tons of options to choose from in this eyeshadow palette. Uh, but pink was usually my go-to whenever I would do heavy makeup looks. Um, there's tons of selfies on the Unusually Horrid Facebook page of me wearing pink eyeshadow. So I think I'm gonna do that today. It's the most classic unusually horrid look. So I'm gonna take this small brush that I use in my crease and I'm gonna go in with this color down here, which is Yacht Life. And I'm just gonna put it in that crease area. Really what I like to do in these sort of bold eyeshadow looks is to, with the darkest color, kind of just start that line that I'd want my cat eyeliner to go over. And then I work it up into the crease. I feel like I could be closer for you guys. I could also zoom in. So once I have that basic shape on, I just like to blend that out before I add a lighter glitter color here. Okay, so from here I'm going to go in with this color right here, which is called Revel in it. So I am going to take this on my brush first. I kind of used to hate on people for using their fingers as makeup brushes. I really did. But when it comes to these shimmers, it works a little bit better. So I'm going to use the brush first and then I like to just put a little bit more on with my finger. Now I've got some on my finger and I'm just going to swipe that just to make it a little bit more intense. Now I'm going to take this color right here, picture perfect, to just sort of blend those two in together. All right, so from here, I'm gonna do a highlight. Which color? I'm gonna do this champagne color, just the two of us right here, right in the corner and under my brow. Or just us two, sorry, I got the name wrong. Just us two. Now that my eyeshadow is done on each side and that it looks like I haven't done any eyeshadow on this side, which is you know, the goal, because it's trying to look natural with my natural skin. Now this side, on the other hand, is popping. It's looking good. We got a highlight going on. I love the pink. It's time for some eyeliner. Just because I go natural with the color on this side, I still like a nice cat eye with a little pop of white underneath. And on this side, similar but a little bit more intense. So it's been a long time. I stopped using the white eyeliner on my waterline on this side a long time ago to make sure that it wasn't causing the issue. Uh, so we're not using this on this side, but I figure since there's nothing wrong with this side, I'll show you what I used to do. So I would take my NYX little chubby white crayon here and just pop that right on the waterline. So I'm gonna do the same liner on each side. It's the same liner you've seen me do in a million videos. So I think we can do another bang, bang, boom, eyeliner done. Uh, so on the healing side now, I will take my NYX. Okay, so actually, just kidding. Um, just so you know, I use my NYX Epic Ink Eyeliner. For the black and for the white, I'm using my NYX Epic Wear White Liquid Liner. And I'm just going to take this, and it has a nice little pot here. Well, like it's a dip in, it's not a pen. I'm gonna just make sure that my point here is nice and pointy so I can hopefully get a nice looking line here. Now it just has like a little pop of detail to make it a little more edgy for daily wear. Uh, I do the same thing on this side, but this will have more eyeliner in just a bit. So we'll get there in a second. So we're gonna put this on the side. So for the healing side, I'm pretty much done. I would just take my mascara now and I've been using the Level Up, which is Uma by Sharon C. I found it at Walmart and I really like it. 
and I don't really put any on my lower lash line because I don't want it to bother the steroid cream. So that's it for the healing side. That side is done. This side is nowhere near done because I put so much stuff on my face when I was trying to hide my skin. So from this point, on the hiding side, I would take my Flawless Satin Foundation by e.l.f. in shade Pearl 120 and just shloop, 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 all over. And we just cover everything on the ear, down my neck. We wear lots of foundation here. So from here in like my base routine, I would go back in with my 16 hour camo concealer under the eye, on the tip of the nose, on my forehead and my chin. Sometimes I would get crazy and do the jawline. So for the sake of seeing how much makeup I would wear on a regular basis sometimes, we'll do it. Kind of alarming to see how much makeup I used to wear every single day and wonder why I would wake up so early. All right, let's blend this out real quick. It's honestly like no wonder to me why when I first started doing this, I wouldn't recognize myself in the mirror. Like honestly, after the better part of like seven years of doing my makeup so heavily, it almost gives you a sense of dysphoria. Interesting to unpack. Anyway, I'm glad that we've healed enough to where we can be here. Anyway, so from here I would powder the snot out of my face using some NYX HD powder press and uh, my trusty little poof here and just start right under the eye. Back in the back in the day, circa beauty school days, I used to bake and be all that kind of super cut out crease and all that contour on fleek and such, but Ugh, I do not have the energy for that these days and I don't know how I had the energy for that then. Now from here I would get into contouring. I feel like it's been so long since I've done my base on this channel, but I feel like, you know, considering it's only one side, it shouldn't take that long, right? I guess since we're comparing daily routines to daily routines, my daily routine for a long time honestly was just a contour with bronzer. I have this, it's called Frenemy. It's a little bronzer palette. So one side is a contour, one side is bronzer. Makes it super easy. Sometimes when I was doing cosplay or anything, I would do like a whole contour kit, but realistically, this is what I would use. Contour the cheekbone, contour the forehead, and contour the neckline. Everything to not look like myself, right? Why? She looks fine. And of course we've got to contour the nose because I convinced myself a long time ago that I hated my nose. I don't know why. My nose is fine. Is it because everybody on Instagram over contoured their nose to the point they look like an anime character? Could have something to do with it. It warped my brain for so long of what I should look like versus just, you know, allowing myself to look like what I look like. It's okay to look like what you look like. And then oftentimes I would try to make my lip look really pouty as well. So I'd throw a little bit of contour right there. All right, let's blend that out real quick and add some bronzer and blush. Okay, so contour's blended. I am going to go in with the same brush and just go with the bronzer side and add a little bit more color to this area of my face and this area of my face. Since I always seem to love using foundations that are super, super pale, I have to add color back into my life. Blendy, blendy. She's looking very unusually horrid. She's looking very Nikki's going to work. We love it. So from here, it's time for blush. I've been using the blush out of this Sleeping Beauty palette by Art Heart Revolution. Honestly, this palette sucks for the eyeshadows. However, everything on this side is wonderful, wonderful. The highlighter's gorgeous, the blush gorgeous. The eyeshadow barely shows up. It barely shows up. Anyway, I'm going to use Make It Pink from the blush side. Now, if I'm streaming, I will take way more blush than need be to look, you know, like an e-girl, duh. And take it on the nose, a little bit on the forehead as well. Don't worry, we're gonna blend. Now from the same palette, I'm actually gonna combine both these two highlights, which are Sword of Truth and Prince Philip. So I'm just gonna pop both of those and mix them together. And I'm gonna pop that right 
there and right there on my nose and a little bit on the upper lip. Okay, so now from here, it's round two of eyeshadow. So I'm gonna take that same color, Yacht Life, and just sort of drag that down under my eyelid. All right, now that's looking nice and cartoony, we're gonna do round two of eyeliner. So I think my favorite thing to do for a while, and like I said, this was like daily makeup routine, so this was something that was in my daily makeup routine. I called it like a fish, a fish eye, instead of a cat eye, because I would do one kind of downturned corn, uh, triangle, I guess, like right there, and it'll look like a fish eye. I think I've done it before in a video, so. It's not totally new to this channel, but it was something I was incorporating into my daily makeup routine for a while. Okay, so now that I have like my little fish tail moment going on, I'm gonna highlight it with the same white eyeliner that I used on this side. All right, so that's it for round two of eyeliner and eyeshadow, lipstick and lashes, and then we're done. So for lipstick, often I used a neutral just because I felt like my eyeshadow was so heavy enough that if I used something too crazy on my lips, it would just be too much. So one of my favorites is this super neutral color from Bare Minerals. The label came off millions of years ago and I don't know what the color is named. This almost looks normal. But this also almost looks normal. But this looks kind of nuts. Okay, I'm gonna throw on some mascara, obviously the same kind, on the top and bottom lashes this time, and then we'll be done. Okay, one last step would be setting spray. Honestly, I don't really use setting spray when I do my makeup like this mostly because I don't want stuff all over my skin anymore. Also, I never really felt like I was using it for my eye makeup so much as I was for my skin, so what's the point? So I'm just gonna try and get it on one side. All right, I'm gonna come back for a final reveal in just a second. Okay, so out with the old, in with the new. Let's embrace our skin and embrace healing and embrace the fact that it's okay to do this every now and then, but if I'm being honest with myself, I wasn't always great about taking my makeup off at night and we just saw how much makeup I put on versus if, it, if I leave my makeup on at night, it's not nearly as detrimental anymore. It's kind of funny how when I was hiding my skin, I wasn't able to heal it because there was just so much going on at all times. Even though like, yeah, of course my skin is gonna look flawed and textured and have red bumps and dark under eyes compared to this, but this is like at least a good ounce of crap on my face versus just like, versus just, you know, being pretty much bare face and, embracing the fact that I have skin like every other person. So yeah, embrace your natural skin, embrace the loving makeup, whatever makes you happy. Anyway, if you've watched all the way through, thank you so much. If it's your first time here and you've watched this far, don't forget to subscribe. My next vlog should be a travel vlog because I am going to Florida next week. I hope you guys have a good week. I hope you guys, you know, learned that it's okay to embrace your natural face or at least you were like, dang, that girl wears way too much makeup. I'm glad she's finally embracing her face and you have embraced it for a while. Either way, if you just love wearing this much makeup, I'm not saying that you're hiding anything. I'm saying I was. And it's just nice to get to know my face without makeup because pretty much since I graduated high school, this is all I've known. So it's nice to get to know her. Like I said, thank you so much for watching. Have a good day, have a good night, have a good life. Unusually horrid, out. Okay, bye.